Hey everyone, I'm going to do my John Maxwell. I've had a busy day going out and um, taking a walk, trying to find, see if there's any job advertisement signs in my area. And then I came back, I spent the afternoon applying for jobs. I went for a swim and then I applied for more jobs. So I'm going to end my evening with doing this and then having my dinner. So today I'm on day three of the law of the inner circle and the quote for today from the Bible is from 1 Corinthians 15.33 Do not be misled, bad company corrupts good character. And the leadership thought for today is the qualities inside the leader determine who is inside the inner circle. So when we look at our inner circles and we look at David, King David's inner circle, his inner circle was not valued just because of what they could do. They had value because of who they were. And that's the same with our inner circle. We don't just value people because of what they can do. We value people because of who they are. So for example, when I was young, when I was growing up, my dad had a severe heart condition, but he was part of our community and he was part of our family and we loved him. And he was always treated with respect. He was always included at uh, uh, family occasions, family parties. And it was the same with us when we were sick. We were never left at home on our own to say, okay, you sick, you stay at home. We're going out while my dad was alive. All of us went out together and we all had a nice time. We had people in the family who were disabled. Nobody was left out. Everybody was included, not because of what they could do, but because of who they were. We used to go uh, to my aunt's place. She was crippled. She was in a wheelchair. But we used to go over there and everyone used to cook together so that she didn't feel left out at Christmas celebrations and Easter and birthday parties. So we grew up in an environment where we knew how to be compassionate and how to have empathy for people with hidden disabilities as well as visible disabilities. And you find that with King David too, people were valued because of who they were, not just because of what they could do. And everybody's influential. Everybody's got some level of influence in their community, in their families, in their circle of friends. And what people say about us will help us, whether it's to get opportunities to socialize, to get jobs, to even for me to do my speaking. It's what people will say by word of mouth that will help me or it will hurt me. And then networking, it's not just about who you know, but it's about welcoming new people into your networking, being open to them. And he gives the example that David was hiding from Saul because he, did, he was somebody that he feared. He wanted to escape from an angry king. And that's not a good um, position for people who have authority, whether it's in the family or whether it's in uh, a management position, if people are afraid to speak up and they're just doing what they're told to do, the company is not going to progress because the people like me who are on the front lines or who are doing administration work or supporting executives, if we don't have that opportunity to say how we truly feel, and to express what we think will work, things will not change. So people need to have an environment where they're nurtured, where they're encouraged, where they're empowered, and people shouldn't hold us back. I mean, if we have the option to go up, to earn more, to do well, we should always have that option to take it. Holding people back is not fair to them. And it really is not fair to the company or to the organization that you're with, because in the end, it doesn't benefit you. It doesn't benefit your family. 
And if you're not looking, if you're looking out for people outside your family and not your, your own family, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, in the end, your family will not benefit because the immediate family will suffer and those people on the external relations, they will come up in life. So it's important to remember that whether it's in our workplaces or in our families, if we're not looking out for the best interests of our organization, in the end, these, the organizations will suffer. Just like what's happening now in banking with all the money laundering, all the culture they've created. And people can't say I created it because I definitely was not responsible for creating environments of harassment, environments of money laundering. In fact, I tried to help them and people made a big joke out of it. So who's laughing now? And then uh, John Maxwell says that inner circle people, they should have character. People of weak character cost companies dearly. They cost families dearly and they cost communities dearly. So Nathan in the Bible never spoke out because he was always cringing in fear about speaking out. But when people speak out, true leaders are grateful because they can improve things and they can help to make things better. And then intu intuition. So intuition, being responsive, knowing what could come next, that is important. And also having the ability to foresee what the possible things are that could happen. So for me, I haven't, this is not the first time I've been in this situation. When I had my place at Rosewell Gardens, it was the same thing. And I stood my ground and work came up for me. It didn't come up right away when I needed it, but work did come up for me. So it's important to remain independent, to be in your own space, because when you're living with people, they can kick you out at any time. They can treat you any way they want. And it's their space. If somebody is coming tomorrow, their brother or their sister, they'll tell you, oh, we need the room now, you go. So it's important to remember that for me and to stay independent. And then in our inner circle, we want people who are responsible. We want people who do everything they can to meet their obligations, to do their duties, to be good citizens of this country that has taken us in. I saw one of my friends had posted an article and I did share it on LinkedIn about Unilever closing in Zimbabwe. After almost 80 years, that's not a good sign. So for those thinking that, oh, I should go back to Zimbabwe, I have no intention of going back to Zimbabwe. Why would I? When I know that if things are hard here and it's hard for me to get a job here, imagine it will be a thousand times harder for me to get a job in Zimbabwe. So why would I make a stupid decision that's going to hurt myself? I wouldn't. And then competent. So we need people on our teams who are able to get the work done, who are able to take direction and who are able to learn. It's the same thing with me when I worked in customer service, in HR, in project management, I had to learn. It's not like I didn't make any mistakes. I had to learn on the job and I had to change. And that's what I did. And the education is good because it gave me a starting point. It gave me the knowledge that I could apply. And then from there, I could learn from the management. I could learn from what the business needed and I could grow and change because of that. And then loyalty. So lack of loyalty uh, leads to disqualification. So if people are not loyal to you, if they're willing to let you go to jail, if they're willing to let you think that you lie to the police, if they're willing to let you let people think that, oh yeah, you can't achieve anything in life. When your track record is different, you don't really need to keep people like that in your inner circle. You don't need people who, when you're sick and when you're 
in need of somebody to come through for you, nobody's going to be there because that's not a true inner circle. And then energetic. So it, this is not the be all and end all, but normally high achievers are energetic. They have a lot of energy because they keep coming back. They bounce back. They learn how to do things differently. And that energy helps on a team. It motivates the team. It motivates the new people coming into your team. And it helps them because if we are energetic, we are enthusiastic about our jobs, about our lives. We keep positive and that helps the people around us. So John Maxwell uh, just reinforces here that when God desires a leader to do something of value, he provides people needed to get the job done. And that was true for King David and it will be true for us on our teams. And that's why we pray for our workplaces, we pray for our churches, we pray for our families, because we believe in that blessing in the Christian community and in other religions too. I have very good friends who are Muslim, who are Hindu. We pray for those blessings on our lives because it does come from God and it comes to us and through us, we can make a positive difference in this world. So today's question is who on your team possesses inner circle qualities? And those are the questions that we can take to our organizations, to our church groups, to our communities, even the places we live in. We can reinforce thinking about those qualities and how we can build them up for ourselves on our teams and in our workplaces and wherever we land. So for me, I'm looking for a new job. I'm sending out applications. I'm sending out um, applications for everything that I've done. I've done reception work. I've done concierge work. I've done administration work. I've done executive assistant work. I've done HR work. I've done project management work. I've done work in the hospitals. I've done work in construction. I've done work in retail. So I have a vast number of skills that I can apply depending on where that next role comes from. And of course, I'm competing with thousands of other people. So that referral is so important. And that's why I always put the plug in to say, if anyone knows of anyone, please pass my name on. And I don't give up. No matter how many applications I have to send, I will keep applying and going to job fairs and going looking when I walk past the windows of stores to see if there's a help wanted sign, calling the employers, following up if I can. Today, most people, even recruitment companies, they just want you to apply online. They don't want you to call them. So we have to apply and then wait. But always that inner circle and who can put your name forward makes a big difference. And that's how I got my jobs, I mean, through the agencies, because they knew that my references gave me very good references. I was highly recommended. So that's how I got my jobs in banking. And if I, if I was able to, I always did my best. And it's the same thing now with teleperformance. They didn't have a job for me. I can't work overnight because of wanting to maintain my health. And so it's a decision that I had to make. There's no point me taking a job and landing up sick and disabled and all of that and on medication to earn an income, which is probably not even going to pay my bills on minimum wage. So I have to keep looking and I have to keep applying for jobs where I can get a good paid job and I can earn a decent living because now nobody can say that, oh, she, she thinks she's better than others. She's not willing to take those menial jobs because I did it. I took all those jobs, cleaning jobs, taking out the garbage. And I did it here in Canada, not to prove a point, but that's because all I could get with all my experience and qualifications, 
I couldn't get anything else. And now there are more jobs available in my field and what I'm looking for. So I'll keep applying and hopefully something will come up sooner rather than later because I need to get an income coming in. And with my speaking as well, I'm always looking for opportunities to speak, to hold workshops, to help other companies succeed with the same tools that I'm learning from. So that's the way I do it. And if you do hear of jobs for me, by all means do contact me and put my name forward in your companies and in the banks, in construction, in hospitality, in retail. There's always an opportunity. For me, I don't like going into people's homes. I didn't like it when I did it for Primerica. I like to go into an office or go into a store, do my job and then come home. Or if I'm working from home like I did with customer service, that's different because it's in my own home. But that's what I'm looking for now. And I'm praying for a change that things work out for me for a change.